Okay, corn children. We are going to be approximating the area under the curve f of x equals x squared on the interval from 0 to 2 using left Riemann sums with, here's the kicker, n, not 5, not 7, but n equal subdivisions, where n could be any whole number we want it to be. We, of course, remember the uh, integration symbol is the actual area. We will not be finding this directly at first. We will be approximating at first, but then at the very end, we will turn this into the actual area. I'm going to go quickly here. Feel free to pause it, play it over again. Let's do this. All right, first thing we have to do is find the width of each subinterval. Same process, end of the interval minus the beginning of the interval divided by the number of subintervals. Yeah, that's right, people. It's a variable expression. So that's the width of each subinterval. So starting here at zero, we are going to go over a distance of 2 over n. Now, this is a little crazy, but I'm going to call this one subinterval. I'm going to go to another subinterval. So I'm 1, 2 over n's. This would be 2, 2 over n's. If I go again, 1 subinterval, 2 subintervals, 3, 3, wah, ah, 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 2 over n's. And we would continue doing this n times. There would be n of these, and if we get to the very end of this, this is n, 2 over n's, and the n's cancel, it equals 2. Yeah, I know, it's crazy. But here's the deal. We're going to be doing a left Riemann sum, so I need to figure out what came before the last one. What? Well, if the very edge, the very right end is n subintervals, this is back 1, so this is n minus 1 subintervals. I know, that's crazy, right? One more crazy thing. At the very beginning, at the interval, uh, at the left edge of the interval, we have not moved over any subintervals, so we're going to give this the name, I know it's ridiculous, no 2 over n's. So that establishes all of our subintervals. Again, there's a dot, dot, dot in the middle. We just do this n times. Okay, here's our area expression. Our area will be approximated by the rectangles, each one having a width of 2 over n. Now the heights. The heights are the height of the function at the subintervals. The first one on the left being no subintervals. The next height would be the height of the function at, let me draw these rectangles in, at one subinterval. The next rectangle would be the height of the function at two, two subintervals. And we keep going, drawing in these left Riemann sums, the last one being the height of the function at n minus 1 subintervals. So the very last height, n minus 1, 2 over n's. That's a lot of parentheses. Okay, well this is begging for sigma notation. It's screaming, please, please, write me in sigma notation. So we will. All right, f of this, f of that, f of this, f of that, f of. Each one of the uh, inputs is something n over twos. Each one has a two, n over two, two over n's, starting with zero through n minus one. I'm gonna use the counter number i and it would seem as though we should just put i here and start with 0, because then it would be start with 0, then 1, then 2, and leave it at n minus 1 at the end. Small problem. 
I want to be able to use some formulas later in this process. So all of the formulas start with one. So I'm going to have to adjust. Instead of just putting I here, I'm going to put I minus one. If I fill one in, one minus one will give me the correct starting value, zero. So I'll fill in one, I'll fill in two, two minus one gives you one, I'll fill in three, three minus one gives you two, and so on. At the end of it, I'll fill in n. n minus one is the last number of subintervals. Oh yeah! All right, f of. Our function is x squared, all the way back at the beginning of the problem. The function itself is x squared. So if you have f of 9, it's 9 squared. If you have f of 10, it's 10 squared. We have f of this mess. I need to put this mess into the function, which is just x squared. Campers, it could have been worse. Summation, 1 to n. The function is x squared. This is our x. Okie dokie. I am going to go ahead and square everything. Mm -hmm. Still 2 over n. Still sigma. 1 to n. Squaring this. Oh, minus 1. Minus. That's a minus, trust me. Squaring the 2. Squaring the n. Okay, here we go. This is where this gets incredibly tedious. This is all like algebra substitution work. So I'm going to move quickly through this. This is a scalar. Just trust me, it's going to come out in front. That's going to be 2, 4, 8, n, n squared, n cubed. Foiling this out. i squared, 2i, plus 1. I'm going to break this single sigma notation into three separate sigma notations. One to n, i squared. One to n, negative two i. One to n, one. Now, there are formulas for these with the exception of this negative two. That is a scalar, so I'm just kind of ignoring that. If you want to know where these formulas came from, they are in our textbook on page 260. You don't need to know them. You don't need to memorize them, but there are formulas for this. If you do 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared and you stop at n squared, there's a formula to get the answer. With the exception of the negative 2, there's a formula for 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. That's, that's an arithmetic sequence. There are formulas for this. So these three are going to be replaced with formulas from page 260. You can trust me. Or not. Look it up. All right. Here's the formula for this one. It's the obvious choice. n. n plus 1. 2n plus 1. All over 6. You're going to guess that, right? Plus, there's a scalar of negative 2. The formula for 1 to n of i is n, n plus 1, all over 2. Plus, there's a formula. It's n. If you think about that one, you'll, you'll get it. All right. We need to do math. We need to combine these. I'm going to get a common denominator. So I didn't cancel these. In order to get a common denominator of 6, I will multiply by 3, top and bottom. Here, 6, top and bottom. You look carefully. We have common denominators, common factors of n. I'm going to factor that out. Here's what's left behind. Foil this out. Freaking lights turn off every time. Foil that out, you get 2n squared, 3n plus 1. Foil this out, you're going to get, remember the n factored out, negative 6n, negative 6, plus 6. Canceling. 
2n squared minus 3n plus 1. Whew! That is the formula for n subintervals. Now, here's where this gets crazy. That's approximate area, actual area. Take the limit as n goes to infinity. Fill this up with n rectangles, let n go off to infinity. You have an infinite number of rectangles. If I distribute that for we apply L'Hopital, this is infinite over infinite, apply L'Hopital twice, 8 thirds actual area, there it is.